Let's go right into the paragraph. A 2017 study of sign language learners tested the role of iconicity, the similarity of a sign to the thing it represents, in language acquisition. The study found that the greater the iconicity of a sign, the more likely it was to have been learned. The correlation between acquisition and iconicity was lower than that between acquisition and another factor studied sign language. Okay. So just, this is a great example where dumb summaries are going to help, right? You got you to simplify this. This is there's, there's a lot of technical words here, but they don't matter, right? What are they saying? Uh, iconicity leads to learning. So iconicity equals learning. But then they say the correlation between acquisition and iconicity was lower than uh, that between uh, acquisition and another factor, right? So at, what is acquisition? Remember, acquisition uh, is iconicity. I guess they're the same thing. Um, the correlation between acquisition, acquisition and likeness was lower than that between acquisition and other factors. So, uh, so the frequency equals more learning, right? So they're, they're kind of setting up a contrast here, it seems. Um, so in other words, definitely it's not happening, right? We're talking about two separate things. It's not in other words. Is it a so and as a result? I don't think so. Why would the, the sentence about iconicity and its impact cause the other thing, the, the frequency, to be more important, right? Those are separate ideas. So they're not, one's not causing the other. They are separate ways of measuring, I guess, language acquisition. Now, granted, I think most people aren't going to pick because they don't know what it means. Basically, it means but. Uh, it's a way of kind of saying that the thing we just said might not be completely true or might not be the entire truth. And so that's perfect here, right? They found that iconicity was important. However, but something else was more important, right? It's a clear situation. Granted is definitely in this case kind of admitting that what we just said about how great iconicity is, it's not as great as it could be. So perfect fit. In fact, is used for emphasis. So again, that almost feels like a, a little bit more like a kind of as a result. It's not quite the same thing, but it would be used in a way to, to kind of complement what we just said and, and said and kind of use the second sentence there as a way to provide more evidence or more um, information about the thing we just said. But it's a new piece of information. It's, it's, it's kind of contradicting it. So perfect to use the word but here. Uh, but that is tricky. And like I said, I think the reason people get this wrong is they don't know what granted means. And uh, I think if you even try to look it up in the dictionary online, you're going to have some trouble. I, I think that a lot of these transition words the SAT are kind of are using are not common and, and we, we use them in other contexts. And so if you get a definition, it's going to be the other context as in like he granted the president granted the you know criminal a pardon, right? Like that's not the same definition here. It doesn't mean but in that sentence. He granted the pardon means gave. He gave the pardon. So granted, just weird. But that's the way it goes. Sometimes, you know, some of these English questions in the SAT are about being comfortable with the language of English. The more you read and watch television and all that stuff in English, the more comfortable you'll be with stuff like this. Sometimes it just seeps into your brain without you realizing. But in the meantime, try to memorize these definitions I've got here and that should help.